Will Smith reflected on some of the mistakes he has made over the years, such as his infamous Oscars slap and very publicized marriage woes. I have made tons of mistakes, he said at the Red Sea International Film Festival Saturday. Fame is a unique monster. You can't get too excited when people say good things about you because then when people say bad things about you, you struggle and suffer more. Continuing, he said, I have to be clear about who I am and what I am attempting to do in the world. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air star added that he doesn't want to need the applause of others for him to stay focused on his mission. And at the same time, I am deeply human, and I am in the process of perfecting my virtue. Smith's insightful take on the public perception of him versus his push to grow in his professional life comes weeks after Jada Pinkett Smith, 52, revealed in October that they have been separated for seven years. The bombshell news came ahead of Pinkett Smith's tell-all memoir, Worthy, which has since uncovered a slew of personal marital details, including affairs, sex rooms, and the workings of an open marriage. Of course, news of the couple's separation came as a shock to fans who remember the Men in Black star, 55, slapping Chris Rock on stage at the 2022 Oscars after the comedian made a joke at Pinkett Smith's expense. As a result, the Academy decided to ban Smith from the Oscars and all of its events for 10 years. I accept and respect the Academy's decision, Smith said to Playful Parade at the time. Despite his highly publicized ups and downs over the past few years, Smith said during the film fest that he has an exciting sequel in the works. Smith and Michael B. Jordan are teaming up to make I Am Legend 2. Per the actor, he has submitted the script and has an upcoming call with the Creed 3 star. While Smith's character died at the original ending of the film, an alternate ending on the movie's DVD kept Smith alive. So we are going with the mythology of the DVD version where my character lived, Smith said. I can't tell you anymore. Billie Eilish didn't realize a recent interview she did would be perceived as a coming-out story, but she's not mad about it. I didn't know I was coming out, but I kinda thought, wasn't it obvious? The bad guy singer told Variety on the red carpet for the Variety Hitmakers brunch Saturday. I didn't realize people didn't know, she said. In a November Variety profile, the 21-year-old said, I'm physically attracted to women, but I'm also so intimidated by them and their beauty and their presence. She then elaborated on her comments on the red carpet as she joked, I'm still scared of women, but I think they're pretty. I saw the article, and I was like, oh, I guess I came out today, she said with a laugh. I just don't really believe in coming out. I'm just like, why can't we just exist? I've been doing this for a long time, and I just didn't talk about it. It's exciting to me because I guess people didn't know, so it's cool that they know. She added while also confirming, I am for the girls. Eilish has dated a few different people over the years, including rapper Brandon Adams, who performs under the name Seven Amp. She called him Q. Their romance was featured in the documentary Billie Eilish, The World's a Little Blurry, which was released in February 2021. In that same documentary, Eilish spoke about their breakup saying she just wasn't happy while dating him. She further told People at the time, I didn't want the same things he wanted and I don't think that's fair for him. I don't think you should be in a relationship super excited about things that the other person couldn't care less about. Eilish later dated Jesse Rutherford, who is best known for his work as the singer of The Neighborhood. The pair, who had an 11-year age difference, started dating in October 2022 and split in May. Following their breakup, the singer was seen getting cozy with Love Victor actress Ava Capri, who is queer, at an after-party. <laughs> Kathy Hilton publicly tried to get Nicki Minaj's attention after the rapper did not respond to her private messages. Hey little mama, did you read my DM? The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills alum wrote in the comments section of Minaj's Instagram post Friday. Can anyone help me to get our queen to read my DM? I'm going to sleep in 30 Minninar's paging Barbie. Hilton added in another comment. Minaj, 
who went on Instagram Live with Keisha Cole and Monica earlier in the night, has not yet responded to the call out publicly. It's unclear if she messaged Hilton privately. Fans took to social media to react to the peculiar exchange, with one fan urging Hilton to put down the Chardonnay. I know Paris is at home right now, head in hands, another joked, while a third added, she saw it, she read it, she kept moving. It's unclear why the Bravo star, 64, was trying to get a hold of the super bass rapper, 40. Hilton shared on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen earlier this week that Minaj is her favorite celebrity to follow on Instagram. Her love for Minaj can be seen in the comments section of a handful of the Chun-Li rapper's Instagram posts, where the socialite has a habit of regularly leaving hearts and loving emojis. However, it appears that Hilton and Minaj may have been pals for some time. In October 2022, the super freaky girl songstress and Bravo Labriti shared a hilarious exchange on an Instagram Live, in which Minaj asked Hilton if she could find billionaire lesbians for her and a friend. Then, in September, Hilton told Entertainment Tonight that she was hoping to catch a game of golf with the Anaconda rapper. Saturday Night Live star Bowen Yang is doing great after taking a hiatus from his podcast to work on his mental health. My mental health is great, the comedian exclusively told Playful Parade at the 2023 American Museum of Natural History Gala Thursday night. It's very good, he added. I had a really rough patch and people were very patient with me. It's hard, but, you know, I barreled through. I powered through. The Fire Island star, 33, announced in July that he was taking a temporary break from his podcast, Las Culturistas, to treat bad bouts of depersonalization. I am doing my best to get better, Yang wrote on an Instagram story at the time. According to the Mayo Clinic, depersonalization is a psychological condition in which people have out-of-body experiences that cause them to believe that things around them aren't real. The disorder is more common for people who've had traumatic experiences. Yang has previously detailed that his trauma stems from when his parents sent him to gay conversion therapy when he was 17 years old. He told Rolling Stone magazine earlier this year that he is still trying to process the experience and understands it a different way. He added, I think ultimately that made me value and, in a literal sense, appreciate what I'm able to withstand and survive. You get this sense that you can overcome. He has said he's now in a healthy place with his parents. As Yang continues to work on his mental health, he's also gearing up for the holiday season, which he's planning to spend with family including his older sister and her children. I am planning a trip with my nieces and nephews and maybe the rest of my family, but most importantly, the kids, he enthused. I think we're going to go to San Juan, Puerto Rico. Really excited, yeah. Yang added that he's a generous uncle up to a point. I'm generous, he explained. I'm cool, but I'm also like, I think I also want to... Like, give them a nice, healthy distance from, like, you know, being too spoiled. Yang noted that his nieces and nephews have grown up with a lot of things that he never got, and I will do a good job of reminding them of that every time. <laughs>